Patricia Highsmith was an American novelist and short story writer, author of the psychological thriller starring Tom Ripley. Born in 1921 in Fort Worth, Texas, the daughter of J. Bernard Plangman and Mary Coates, who divorced ten days before her birth, Highsmith receiving the surname of her adoptive father, Stanley Highsmith, after he married her mother in 1924. In 1942, she graduated from Barnard College. She then contributed to comic books, writing stories of Sergeant Bill King, as well as for publishers such as Timely Comics, Fawcett Comics, or True Comics. Her first novel, Strangers on a Train, was published in 1950 and adapted into film in 1951 by Alfred Hitchcock. In private, she was described as a lesbian who preferred the company of men. Following the election of Menachem Begin as Prime Minister of Israel in 1977, she forbade the publication of her books in Israel due to her support of Palestinian self-determination. She died in 1995 in Locarno, Switzerland, of a plastic anemia and lung cancer. She wrote 22 novels, among them the five Ripley novels, published between 1955 and 1991. The Snail Watcher was her first collection, published in 1970, and we shall be reviewing it today. The Snail Watcher is the story of a businessman who allows a bunch of snails to breed and take over his study with horrid, gooey, tragic results for himself. The Birds Post of Fly is the tale of a man waiting for a response to a marriage proposal to a woman he hardly knows, who decides while waiting to write back to the uncared for love letter his neighbour got in the mail, writing in his neighbour's name. The story being a bit anemic. The Terrapin, inspired by the love-hate relationship between Highsmith and her mother, is the story of a small boy provoked a breaking point by the incessant babying and condescension from his mother brought to the edge when she boils a turtle he wanted to play with alive in front of him when the fleet was in at mobile. He is the story of a woman who tries to murder her jealous fundamentalist husband in order to be free of him and has a short trip around the country afterwards. The quest for the blank Cleverini is yet another snail story, reminiscent of a story by Charles Birkin, about a professor committing the error of travelling alone to a remote isle to try and discover a giant snail, leading him to be alone and pursued by a pair of seemingly unkillable giant man-eating snails. Mrs. Afton, among thy green braes, is the story of a woman going to a psychiatrist to try and help her husband who refuses to go himself, and it's all quite good and reminds one of Gerald Kirsch. The heroine is the story of a nanny who wants to show her devotion to her new family by burning all the money they pay her, and who wishes for a catastrophe to happen so she could save the children in a dramatic fashion under threat to her own life. Not all the stories are worthwhile. The Cries of Love is the story of passive-aggressive taunts played on each other by a pair of old sisters. Another bridge to cross has an American widower who lost his son be disappointed when the Italian boy he befriended turns out to be a thief, and the Barbarians has a man throw a stone on top of some people playing baseball beneath his windows annoying him, fearing he may have killed someone, until they all come back playing ball. The Empty Birdhouse is Better, a story of a strange animal pursuing a woman, which she can never really see but is always running about. There are good stories here, but the not good ones tend to drag a lot.